Hello there and welcome to the first video of my tutorial series in creating a realistic airport using Airport Design Editor, Airfield Lights Toolbox, and S Builder X. This video will be about getting the tools downloaded and installed and creating the project directories, laying the foundations that we'll be working with in later videos. You may already have some of these tools installed and that's okay, but some of my scripts that I've created require that certain paths exist and to know those paths to function properly. The first step is to download the tools that we need to our downloads folder. Use the links posted below the video in the comments section. In my browser, I have them all listed in the bookmarks bar. First up is RFMView. It's a free image editing software. I use other programs mainly, but this editor has a special feature in that you can use it via the command line, so I use it in my scripts to convert from the uncompressed format SBuilder gives to a compressed format like JPEG. We can also use it to make the images smaller than the original if we need to resize. On the list of mirrors, I like to use the Brothersoft download. I found that the setup installed with no other software attached to the installer, unlike the ones from CNET and 2Cows, which required a box to be unchecked, so I only installed EarthenView and not the other bogus software they wanted to install with it. Next, we'll go over to scruffyduck.com and go to their ADE downloads page. As you can see, the top of the text says that you can get the current version 1.6x from here but halfway down you see where it says next version 1.65 can be downloaded from here that's the link that we'll use but obviously as time goes on versions will change and this page should change with it so basically you want to get the most current version but airport design editor has a internal automatic update function so that if you're using last week's version and they just updated next time you run the program it will tell you that there's an update available and allow you to update at that point Next up is StuffForFS.com and the AFLT page. On there, there are two ways to get AFLT. The download link will allow you to get to the latest stable release, while the development release will give you the one that it has the new features that they are working on. One reason that I use the development release is that if no one uses the development version, AFLT may release a version that works great on the development machine, but on no one else's or a feature that breaks something that wasn't checked. By finding these problems and reporting back on the FS Developer Forum, we can help fix bugs in the software and make it great. The next two links are direct download pages for SBuilder X 3.14 X64 and an update to the Google server.dll that downloads the map data from the Google servers. Google has moved their data around a lot in the last several months and as a result the Google server.dll contains the location of that data on the Google servers. The last link is for my AFLT utility scripts. This is a collection of Visual Basic script files that I've created to assist with some various functions in AFLT and the images retrieved from SBuilder. They were useful for me so they may be useful for someone else, maybe everybody. So now that we have all the software downloaded, let's go to the Downloads folder. This being a new account on the computer, there is nothing in the Downloads folder except the files for this tutorial. That's probably not the case for your computer, so I suggest making a new folder by right-clicking, then click New and Folder, and give it a name. We'll call it Airport Tools. Then copy all of the files into the Airport Tools folder, and then go into it. So now I want to extract each one of the zip files to its own separate folder. I'm using WinRAR, so WinRAR has an Extract To option, and that Extract To option will put all of the information in the archive into a folder that's based on the name of the archive. If you're using WinZip or 7-Zip or some other extraction program, use the option that closest matches that idea. So now that all the files are extracted, first we're going to go into the Google Server folder, right click on the Google Server.dll, copy, go back to the Airport Tools folder, go into S Builder, go to the Tiles folder, right click and paste and overwrite. So now we've updated S Builder. I can go ahead and delete the Google Server folder and be done with it. Next, I'm going to rename the AFLT folder to AFLT, which is much friendlier than the downloads AFLT1100J that I downloaded. So the next step, we're going to start installing EarthenView. So double click the iView.exe, run. So I'm going to install for all users on the PC. Now the installation folder should be C Program Files x86 EarthenView. If you're installing to a folder other than the program files x86 folder, we're going to have to update the utility scripts to use that path. So if yours is not program files x86, highlight all of the text in the box, right click and then copy, 
go to the AFLT Utility Scripts, right click on the Image Convert, Edit, and now find where the path is at the third or fourth line, highlight it in Backspace, then right click and paste, then save and close. Now do the same thing for the resize one. Okay, so now that's updated. We go back to Earth and View. I'm going to click Next and then Next again. I'm already using another image editor for all of my image formats, but if for some reason you want to use Earth and View, you can allow it to apply to images only as the default editor. You can select everything or you can select nothing. It's already defaulted to nothing, so I'm just going to click Next. Then I'm going to make sure that it installs uh, in the user application data folder. Next. So now it's installed. I'm going to unclick the Start Earth View box so that I don't actually start it right now, and then click Done. Opens up a tab in your default browser, so I'm going to go ahead and close that as well. Next, we're going to install ADE. So let's go back to our Downloads folder, Airport Tools, and now we'll go to ADE 165 Full. Double click that. So first, what they're telling us is that if we already have an existing version of ADE to keep it, that if we install the new version of ADE, put it in its own folder, the default will give it its own separate folder that's different from the previous version. Then we can use the import function to copy settings and data from an existing version, and then we can work on the new version until it's comfortable. But if there's something wrong with the new version, we can always go back and use the old version. Once we've got the new version set up the way we want, then we can delete the old version if we wish. So that's kind of an interesting idea. So we'll click Next. Now these are the rules. Yes, we're going to abide by the rules, so yes. Next, to install ADE. And then finally, we choose a path. Now the path that's set up it keeps ADE out of the program files x86 folder due to permission issues that some operating systems have. The only change that I would make to this would be to change the C to a D or an E if I had a second or a third hard drive and I wanted to keep the uh, all of my tools away from my Windows installation. Since this computer only has the one hard drive, I'm going to leave it as is and just click Next. Okay, now ADE is installed. I'm just going to uncheck the Execute Program button and then click Close. Now that ADE is installed, all we have to do is install the other two tools right next to it. So I'm going to uh, minimize this window. I'm going to right click on the ADE background, open file location, go to FS Design Tools, right click and drag AFLT and move, go into S Builder, right click and drag and move. Now, airport tools, I can delete the airport or the ADE full and the S Builder folders. So now I've got those installed. Now all I got to do is make shortcuts. So move the window just a little bit, go into AFLT, right click and drag, then create shortcuts here. Back to S Builder and do the same. So now that all of the programs are installed and the shortcuts are made. All that's left is to make the directories for our projects. So we'll go to the downloads folder and go to the utility scripts. And then we'll take the FS design tools window and go to the documents folder. So this documents folder is absolutely empty, which yours probably will not. So we're going to create a folder to keep it separate. We'll call this scenery development. Go into the scenery development folder and copy everything from the AFLT folder into the scenery development folder. So now if we want to create a new project, all we have to do is double click to create project. Now it's asking us for the name of the project. So if it's an airport, we can use the name of the airport or the ICAO code. So I'm just going to use the land. Now it's asking if we want to create an independent AFLT library. We have two options. An independent AFLT library means that every airport, every scene we, that we create is going to have its own separate BGL file for all of the lights that we create with AFLT. 
if we have a global library, then what ends up happening is we put the AFLT BGL file in the FSX scenery global folder, and then any project that would reference those items would find in that global file. Um, now, obviously, the global file is going to be utilized for all of the projects. So if you update the global file with a future project, then you'd have to release uh, all of the original projects with that new updated library to make sure that people are getting the same version across everything. Otherwise, if they install the new version and then they install the old version, they may get a different library. So sometimes keeping a separate library for each project is better. But in my case, I'm going to release one single library for everything. So I'm going to click no, in which case it creates the project file. There's the land and images in, inside. This is where we're going to save all of the images that we get from SBuilder. It also creates a TIFF folder that the image convert tool uses to copy the original TIFF file into when it creates the JPEG. Uh, that way that it creates the original TIFF image as a backup. Also, if we look at the uh, scenery development folder, we have an AFLT library folder, and this is where we're going to create the AFLT library at using AFLT. So now that we've got the project folder created, we can go ahead and close down these windows. Now let's open up AFLT. Uncheck the box and click Run. So there is an update available. I'm not going to download it this time, but you cert certainly can. So yes, I want to continue checking for updates. So I'm going to select the library. So if you have different projects going on, when you click Select, you choose each individual library itself. Since I'm using a global library, I just have to do this once. So I'm going to click Libraries, Documents, My Documents, Scenery Development, AFLT Library. OK. Does not appear to be a library folder. Yes, don't worry about it. OK, so now our library is created. If we were using a separate library for each airport, then we'd go Select, Libraries, Documents, My Documents, Scenery Development, then the land and inside here would be an AFLT library folder all by itself and we choose that one and then click OK. And then it would create all the library elements for that airport. When we create a new project then we just have to use select and go to the new projects library folder and that will keep each library independent. As we choose different libraries the drop down list will populate with all of the other options that we've created. So AFLT is done. So now let's open ADE for the first time. So down here you can see the ADE is checking for an update of which 5384 is the current version. So it will find an update. I'm not going to do the update now, but we can in the future. So first it's saying if this is the first time we've done a new user wizard, um, it's strongly recommended we complete all the steps. So if we already have an existing version of ADE installed, we can use the import settings button to import certain files and information from the previous version. And hopefully this one will work similarly to that other one. We don't have that on this, so I'm just going to click Next. So now it's asking for my initials. Then the timeout of the delay of the messages is two seconds by default. Every five minutes, ADE will automatically save your project that you're working on. That way, if it crashes, it will respond. Uh, the time, I actually like the messages to pop up only for one second. I'm pretty used to the way that ADE works and the messages being for two seconds just interrupts me for one second longer than it needs to. The uh, autosave I'm going to put as 30 minutes just because ADE does not crash and every time that I seem to be dragging a uh, polygon or trying to click on something the autosave pops up and it just takes it just that much longer and it interrupts so the fact that uh, ADE doesn't crash I'm I'm fairly comfortable in saying that 30 minutes is okay for me, um, but you may want to keep the five minutes till you get more comfortable with it. And then after 30 minutes or an hour or whatever you specify, you can change it from that point. So I'm going to click next and then find. Now it's going to find from the uh, registry all of the path information for the different things that it needs. So I'm going to click next. Now, being in America, I'm going to use nautical miles for overall distances. The dimensions are going to be in feet. Parking radius, I'm going to leave as meters. I've actually gotten used to using meters for the different parking radiuses. Um, the altitude, I'm going to put in feet. 
And as far as the coordinates format, I am actually going to say use decimal only because that is a pure raw number. And numbers are the only thing that is contiguous across all different programs. This program may use north 30 space 35.888. Maybe another program puts an asterisk after the 30 and then a quote and then a single apostrophe after the 888 to indicate minutes and seconds. So it's one of those things where the DDM format may be various across different programs, but the numbers are consistent. So I'm going to use the decimal next, and I'm just going to leave these as default. Click next and then finish. So AD is done. It's configured and it's ready to go. So there we are. We have all the programs installed. All the folders are configured for our projects. And in the next video, we'll use S Builder to get the map tiles that we'll load. And then we'll get an airport prepared for editing. So I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, you can find me on the FS Developer website. You can ask your questions at the bottom of the video, but I can't say that I'll be quick to respond as I frequent the FS Developer website and have a 60 to 70 hour a week job that when I get home, I may eat and go straight to bed, but I'll try to answer as best as I can. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.